I'm guessing that the last time you watched TV or a film, photography wasn't at the forefront of your mind. However, I believe that us stills photographers can learn a lot from watching moving pictures. So stay tuned as I reveal five ways you can improve your photography skills just by watching your favourite shows. Number one is camera angles. When it comes to moving pictures, directors will often use changing camera angles to keep viewers engaged and emotionally invested in what they're watching. Slow cuts can build suspense, when fast cuts can draw you into an action sequence. Obviously when we're taking stills photos, we're not doing either of these things. However, offering people a different angle can completely change the mood and understanding of a photograph. Take these two photographs here for example. Which one do you prefer? I'm guessing it's the one from the different perspective. Avoiding what I like to call tripod eyes, taking photographs from the same angle all the time, can really spice up your images, help you to get your point across and ultimately be more impactful. So next time you're watching your favourite show, have a look at the different angles that they use. Which ones could you take advantage of and use to influence people through your photographs? Number two is mise-en-scene. Hang on a minute, nobody told me I needed a translator. Mise-en-scene means setting the stage. And in the world of the moving picture, it's where the directors physically build each shot that's being filmed. From the characters involved, to the lighting being used, Basically, everything that we see in front of camera. We can relate to these things as stills photographers as well. Okay, we're not telling each individual frame of a story, but we're looking for that one impactful shot that's going to get our intent across. We call the answers to these problems composition and form. When we take photos, however, photographers usually try and shy away from that word staging because don't we want our photographs to be natural and true to life? The truth is, and this may hurt a little bit, as photographers we need to stage our photographs. If we want them to look natural, we've got to make them look natural, not wait for the world to fall into place in front of our eyes. We are the directors. To do this, we have to pay attention to absolutely everything in front of our camera. Otherwise, we could be in danger of getting something really distracting in the background. Missed focus, or even worse, bad lighting. If you pay close attention next time you're watching one of your favourite programmes, you'll notice that no stone has gone unturned when it comes to staging. Let's put it this way, if you were watching a period drama and somebody walks into the scene wearing a digital wristwatch, you'd scoff and say, how on earth have they missed that? What a terrible mistake! Paying close attention to mise-en-scene will stop you from making similar mistakes when you're taking photographs. Number three is hierarchy. Now we've got our staging set, we need to work out what's most important. In the world of the moving picture, hierarchy refers to the way that a director will layer each shot. The things that they want people to notice will stand out within the frame and take precedence over everything else. And the contextualising elements, those background things going on, will be there, but they will only give context, they won't take over. To translate this into stills photography, we need our subject matter to stand out, and our background to be just that. Otherwise, lines are going to get crossed and we're going to confuse our viewers. The ways that we can rectify this is through colour, contrast, lines, depth and perspective. Next time you watch TV or a film, look out for this. I guarantee that your eyes will never be confused. You'll always know who the main character is and what you should be taking notice of within the frame. Number four is colour grading. Colour grading is often subtle, but it plays a massive part in absolutely everything that you watch. It's where a scene will have a certain colour hue to it that helps to set a scene and gives continuity. This is a still taken from the recent drama adaptation from the BBC, The Gold. 
This is a still taken from a real-life documentary. And this still is taken from the Sky Atlantic drama The Last of Us. The gold was set in the 1980s. Notice the photographic film-like look to this frame. It's almost got a faded, warm tone to it, not dissimilar to the Kodak gold film stock. These techniques take us back in time and give us associations to work with. It places this scene directly where the directors intend it to be and gives us a constant reminder of what we're watching. Documentaries often aim to be more true to life, so therefore don't use a lot of additional lighting. We can see this frame is a bit more punchy and slightly cooler than the one from the gold, bringing us well and truly back into the present day. Sci-fi or futuristic programs will often have a blue or cooler colour grade to them. Notice how this frame from The Last of Us shows us exactly what genre we're watching just by the subtleties of the colours being used. Colour grading can be very much a thing in stills photography as well, and personally I think it's a tool that's underused. OK, so our photographs might not be pieces of fiction, but we can see how colour can bring so much more to the table than just being a depiction of what our eyes see. It can change the mood, the setting, the intent and the general feel of a shot. So next time you're watching something on the box or the silver screen, pay closer attention to the colour. What's it telling you and how could you pick up on that in your photographs? Number five is breaking the rules. Many people think there is a set way you should make photographs. I'm sorry, there just isn't. When we watch TV, if we look closely enough, there's always rules being broken. When something's presented to us in a way that we're not expecting or it's not conventional, then we automatically start to feel on edge. This is exactly what the director was aiming for. Remember mise-en-scene? Everything in front of the camera is accounted for even down to the detail of how they think we're going to perceive what we see. When done correctly and with purpose, breaking the so-called rules of photography can be really effective. I'm not saying do it all the time, because we need that continuity to know what we're looking at, but throw in a few curveballs from time to time and make your viewers think. Although still and moving photography are two very different animals, I think if we can learn to dissect and really look closely at some of the idiosyncrasies of each, we can really take advantage of them. If you don't take anything else from the points that I've made in this video, please take note of this. Photography is all about observation. We have to learn to look in as much detail as we possibly can whether we're taking influences from something we're watching on screen or whether we're out and about in the field with our camera. Think about everything. Attention to detail is what makes or breaks a photographer. One last thing before you go. Did you know that your camera's holding you back? Watch this video next to find out why and how you can stop it. <laughs> <laughs>